Good morning, friends. Happy, happy New Year's to all of you. My friends, it is finally happening. New direct deposits will be made for millions of Social Security, SSI, and SSDI beneficiaries. Also, you may be able to claim as much as $3,000. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has also proposed a new bill. My friends, Please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for the latest stimulus news. Also, I will be giving away several Walmart gift cards. And if you would like to enter these giveaways, my friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Remember that the more videos you watch and leave a comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. So friends, it is now January. So Social Security recipients can look forward to bigger benefit checks in just a few days. Back in October, the Social Security Administration announced a 2023 cost of living adjustment would be 8.7%. That is the largest boost in 41 years. The bigger COLA for 2023 should help seniors with soaring costs for everything from food, gas, utilities, and housing. Social Security payments in January will be made according to the same monthly schedule, with payments going out on the second, third, and fourth Wednesdays of each month. But the cost of living adjustment is far from the only change heading into the new year. There will also be changes in Social Security disability thresholds, Social Security earnings limits, and Medicare premiums deducted from Social Security payments. This year's adjustments will raise the average payment for retired workers by $146 a month from $1,681 in 2022 to $1,827 this year. According to the Social Security Administration, the maximum benefit for Social Security claimants at full retirement age will be $3,627 a month. That is increasing from $3,345 last year. This new payment amount will start this month for most Social Security beneficiaries. For those receiving supplemental security income benefits, the new payment amounts have already begun going out on December 30th, 2022. Many experts have said that the 5.9% COLA that Social Security recipients received in 2022 was ineffective in battling an inflation rate that spent much of the year above 8%. To make matters worse, a record high increase in Medicare Part B premiums meant that Social Security recipients had even more money deducted from their monthly payments. Healthcare has gotten more expensive for everyone over the past few years, and that is especially hard on seniors who are living on a fixed income and often have more health issues than younger adults. Most seniors rely on Medicare, but that brings expenses of its own, and it doesn't cover everything. But fortunately, the government is making a few changes to the program this year that should help seniors save a little bit more. Original Medicare is composed of Part A and Part B. Part A is hospital insurance, which covers inpatient care at hospital and nursing facilities. And most people do not have to pay any premiums for that. Part B is medical insurance, and this covers outpatient medical care, including most doctor visits. There is a deductible and premium for this. In 2022, most individuals paid about $170 per month and had a deductible of $233. But premiums are falling to $164 in 2023, and deductibles are dropping to $226. Some high earners will pay more than this, but they too will see their rates fall compared to 2022. Also friends, this week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced that the House would once again raise its staff salary cap, bringing the maximum salary up to $212,100. Speaker Nancy Pelosi wrote in a Dear Colleague letter, As you know, our hardworking, patriotic congressional staffers are integral to the functioning of the House of Representatives, ensuring this institution can effectively carry out our legislative and constituent responsibilities. Pelosi raised a maximum salary for House staff to $199,300 last year. After more than a decade of stagnating staff salaries in the wake of the lawmaker pay freeze, 
that was put in place in 2009. The salary cap was raised again in May to $203,700 to maintain parity with Senate staffers. Nancy Pelosi also stated, To that end, we must do all we can to retain and recruit the best talent in our nation and to build a congressional workforce that reflects the communities we are honored to serve. Following the 2021 increase in the salary cap, House staff can now make more than their lawmaker bosses. Rank-and-file members of Congress earn $174,000 a year, while members of congressional leadership earn slightly more. Nancy Pelosi also instituted a minimum of $45,000 salary for House staffers in May, the first time that Congress has had a salary floor for its staff. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on this? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Well, my amazing and greatest dearest friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this New Year's Day morning. Thank you so much, friends, for being part of this community. The winner of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Marlon Pico. Congratulations, my dear friend. To claim your gift card, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you can also message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful and blessed New Year's Day. To threaten their counterparts in the Senate is equal parts dangerous and destructive. As Republican Senator Kevin Kramer said, and I quote, the reality is, that, is this kind of chest thumping and immaturity doesn't instill confidence in their ability to lead, end quote. You know, you hear it all the time. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. I'll be one of, I'll be one of the first to say that this bill isn't perfect. It doesn't address everything I wanted, nor does it address everything in the way I wanted. But it's a good bill. It was put together through hours of hard-fought negotiations that involved members in both chambers from both sides of the aisle. It's not anyone's fault but their own that House Republicans chose to walk away from the negotiating table. At the end of the day, we are here to legislate, to get stuff done. We are here to help the American people, and that requires us to keep the lights on. The last time Republicans held the majority in the House, they left us in a prolonged government shutdown that cost our country and taxpayers over $11 billion. I can promise you the Democrats have no plan of letting that happen under our watch. We must pass this rule and the underlying bill and get it to the President's desk. Mr. Speaker, I urge a yes vote on the rule and the previous question. I yield back the balance of my time and I move the previous question on the resolution.